Hi, my name is Michael Seacrest. I'm one of the developers on the Speedtree team, and in this video I'll attempt to answer one of our most frequently asked questions, which is, can I use my own meshes and artwork in Speedtree? The answer is yes, and we'll get started by looking at images first. I'm going to switch over to Photoshop for a second, and I've made uh, two very easy to spot texture maps that we're going to put on that notional tree model at the beginning of the video. We've got a red and a green checkerboard called checkerred.tga and checkergreen.tga. All right, we're going to put those on this model. Uh, the way you do that is to go to the Materials tab, and we're going to add a material for each one. The quickest way to do that is to do use this button, which it means Add by Browsing, and I'll pick Checker Red and Checker Green, and open them. And once I do that, in addition to my original demo material, I now have Checker Red and Checker Green. Now, once you have them in there as a material, and notice I've only filled up one slot. I filled up the Diffuse map. There are four other slots that we'll talk about later. But once you want to use this on the model, the quickest way to do it is just grab this hand icon and drop it right on on the model where you want to use it. Now notice I dropped it on the trunk and it inherited through to level 1 and level 2. You're not limited to one material per tree or even per uh, set of branches or anything like that, so you can use as many as you want. And these can be artwork of your own creation, they can be images out of our tree library, it doesn't make a difference to speed tree. So I'll start with... Uh, further demonstrated by taking green and putting on the level 1 branches. So now we've got a red checkerboard trunk, green branches. If you want to explicitly assign these, you can click on these generators and, and, and change uh, anything about the materials you want. Look at the materials group. When I dropped uh, checker green on there, it made this one automatically. Well, I could add a second material. Maybe I want to have a mix of red and green branches. So now I've got an even mix of red and green, an even Further to the point, you can switch to node editing mode and click on an individual branch and change it explicitly to whichever one you want. So they're sort of randomly distributed by the generators, but you can change what it did. So, And the branch material for that node, the material is generated, which means whatever the generator wanted it to have, but I can switch it to whatever I want. So I'm going to switch it over here to from green to red. So I'm able to go in there on a node-by-node -node basis and assign materials however I want. I can use the generators to distribute them. So you, you really have a lot of flexibility in where these, how these maps get distributed through the tree model. Uh, we're going to switch over to meshes now. Before I do that, I'm going to put the purple material back on here to make the meshes more obvious. Now notice that when I do this, I'm going to drop it on there, and I'm going to go over here to level 1 and change both of these to inherited. So it will inherit the base material. But notice this one didn't. This is the one that I node edited, and when, when you make a node edit, make, you make a node edit, that sticks. So uh, no matter what you've done, you've chosen that material for that that node, and I can get rid of it either by reversing the node edit, which I'll do, or I could reset the whole tree model or randomizer in a, any number of ways. But I'll do it by just changing that back to inherit. <coughs> so now we have the purple tree again, and we're going to put some meshes on the tree. I'm going to switch over to 3D Studio Max just to show a couple of meshes that I've made in here. I've got the letter A with a little spot where I'm going to hang it off the tree as a leaf and uh, put the red checkerboard pattern on it. And one thing to notice about it is the pivot point for the mesh should be at the origin of the scene. And you can do you can use these and uh, you can make these meshes in Max, Maya, uh, any DCC app. Um, and you can save them out in OBJ or FBX formats. And what I, so what I've done is I've got the letter A and I've also got the letter B and I used uh, just used the default OBJ exporter to export selected and I've saved out A and B as OBJ files individually. And switch back to the modeler now. I'm going to bring those in on the meshes tab in a manner almost identical to how we brought the, the images in. I've got A and B. I selected both at the same time and now I've got there's B and here's A. Get a preview. Notice the uh, axis indicator where the pivot point is, the, the origin of the max scene like I said before. And we're going to use those as leaves. I'm going to select the highest level branches here and add a default leaf. When you do that, it makes camera facing leaf cards by default. We'll, we'll grab this A mesh and drop it on there. And replace the camera facing leaf cards with a bunch of letter A's. And I'll click on that and change a few parameters to make it a little more uh, what we're looking for. I'm going to change these distance parameters to zero, making it forcing them to hang directly off the tree. Go in the meshes group, and I'm going to change the hang value from 0.5 to 1. This is going to make them all hang straight up and down. So we got a bunch of letter A's hanging straight up and down. Uh, just as we did with the branches, you're free to put any material on anything in the in the tree model. So I'll take this red checkerboard and put it on the A's. 
Also, as we did before, I can go and add a second leaf type to be generated. I'll add a B, and I'll go ahead and put checker green on it here. So we've got an even mix of A's and B's. Another thing we can do is we can make that not be an even mix. I could take uh, take the weight of the A's up to, say, 15. So now we should see far more A's than we do B's, and that's what's going on. Another interesting thing we can do is we can use the parent curves to put, say, all the A's at the bottom and all the B's at the top. And there's a, if you've been watching these tutorials, you've seen the one on parent curves. If not, I suggest you go back and watch it. But basically what the parent curve does is, uh, is cause the, uh, the value here to be multiplied based on where it's growing in the tree. So we've got a weight of 1. I'm going to click the parent curve. I'm going to change the parent level to 3, which means we're going to look back 1, 2, 3 levels to the trunk. And as I bring the right side down, that means anything growing near the end of the trunk is going to have a lower weight. And as you can see me, as I pull this curve, you can see the, the tree model updating. And if I take it to an extreme and, and put uh, the weight all the way down to 0 there and all the way back up to 1 up here, we should see A's a little more at the bottom than they are at the top based on where the level 1 branches grow off the tree. So if I take the uh, spine angle of level 1 and sort of flatten this out, it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. So go back here to the leaves again. And we, we only addressed A, so I'm going to take this curve. And maybe I'll grab both these control points and move down a little bit to get some more A's out of there. And I'll copy this curve and go over to the B curve and paste it and then flip it horizontally so now I should see uh, I'm on the B curve here so this means near the start of the trunk the weight should be 0 and near the end of the trunk it should be 1 that's what we're seeing we're seeing B's at the top and A's at the bottom now as a slightly more practical example I'm going to open a tree from our library the peach tree and just uh, I'm not going to edit this one I'm just going to talk about some of the aspects of it uh, so we had some sort of ridiculous models at the beginning of this tutorial. But if we take a look at, at a real tree model and some of the meshes in it, we have a, a reasonably low polygon uh, peach model here that's you know responsible for all these uh, peaches hanging out in the tree. Let me change this wireframe a little bit easier spot. We also have uh, two individual leaf models and then some branch meshes as well. So let's talk about the leaves for a second. If I go over to the material tab, you can see that there are actually two leaves, they're atlas together in here, and each one of those two leaf meshes, which are represented in here, this is an even mix of both kinds of leaf meshes. One of them uses the leaf on the left, one of them uses the leaf on the right. That's based on texture coordinates that were put on the model in the app that created the mesh. So that would be something like 3ds Max or Maya or Cinema 4D or anything that you want to use to to write out the models with. Um, couple notes about it, there's, there's uh, as I said before, there's several different uh, layer types with associated with each material, and if I switch over here to the to the bark, zoom in on the bark, you can see that we have a diffuse texture map, a normal map, no specular map, there's no specular lighting on the bark, we have a detail map, and a detail normal map. And just to give you an idea what they what those do, I can you can toggle them with this enabled button, so you can see as I as I toggle the normal map on and off, it looks uh, goes from being perfectly smooth to looking rough. And the detail map is particularly interesting. That's is what's being used to accomplish the sort of gash in the bark. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the difference that makes. And this is basically there's two sets of texture coordinates on every branch piece of branch geometry, and we're using a multi-texturing effect to pull that off. If we take one last look here at the uh, at the leaves, we can see the diffuse and the normal map. Another interesting map is a specular map controls, this is multiplied by the specular effect on the leaves, so you can control you know, where, where that's allowed to go and um, what color that is, so you, this, this can actually be a color image here. And the alpha channel is a transmission mask, so this is what's used when the light source is behind the tree and the subsurface scattering simulation is causing uh, the backs of the, the leaves to, to glow more brightly, and I'm going to really amp up that effect here just to point out what's going on. If we look back at this guy, you can see the veins are masked out. And you can see that as I move the light source around, the veins maintain their original color where everything else gets the light transmission.
Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and look for more instructional videos on the Speedtree YouTube channel and at speedtree.com.